Um, Self-aware Sundays. So, like I was saying before, y'all, my therapy journey. How did I get to therapy as a diagnosed self-aware narcissist? So, y'all, from the very beginning of my entire, entirety of my life, like I said, July 14, 1985, I've always felt like I was different. I always felt like my mind worked different. I always felt like I didn't fit in. I, I always felt like I didn't fit in in certain places. I, would, I tell people this right here, y'all. It feels like I woke up on my seventh or eighth birthday. I never, I can never get the date and time right, just correct y'all, because it was 30 years ago. But on my seventh or eighth birthday, I felt like I was born. I know I was born July 14th, 1985, but it feels like 1992 or 93 was when I was actually born. It's kind of like I woke up and was birthed at that time right there. And yeah, I knew my family, I knew who my family was, I just didn't know who I was. So since the, since the beginning of my life, I just didn't know who I was. You know, I knew who I, I like when I was born again, <laughs> kind of on my seventh, eighth birthday, I didn't know who I was. I knew, who, I knew who everybody else was. I have a twin brother. I knew who he was. I knew every role that every person in my house played in my life. I just did not know who I was. It's kind of like I was a blank slate starting from scratch at seven or eight years old. It doesn't say eight years old, y'all. At eight years old. So from that point forward, I just kind of started mimicking people, y'all, because I didn't know who I was. I just started taking other people's personality characteristics. I didn't want to, I felt internally, I felt like I didn't stay, internally, I felt like I was an outlier. I felt like an alien. You know, I felt like everybody could see through me and I didn't fit in. So, it, but I, so I didn't want to express that externally. I wanted to cover up my internal by working on the external. So I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to copy my brother. I'm going to copy my friends. I'm going to copy my cousins. I'm going to act like them. The, the good qualities. I'm going to take the good qualities because I wanted people to like me. You know what I mean? I wanted to fit in to the point where people liked me. I didn't want to draw too much attention to myself, but I wanted people to like me. So when I, so when I first started liking myself, you know what I mean? When I first started doing that stuff, um, and when I, I started mirroring people since I was very, very little. Yo, know, mirroring is a real thing with narcissists. Um, so I started acting different, y'all. I, I started from the ages of eight until I just started mirroring people, copying people, making friends and stuff. I had a lot of friends when I was growing up. I had a lot of cousins. Um, but I feel like a lot of my friends came through because I was, I was a twin, my twin brother. They liked my twin brother, so they liked me, so we were all cool. If you wasn't family, you liked me because I had a twin brother. We were cool, it was unique, because there wasn't a lot of um, young black twins in Reedsville, North Carolina back in the, the early 80s, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know what I mean? So we kind of stood out with that aspect of things right there. Um, but like that's how I just went, y'all, for a long time. I grew up and I always kind of try, always kind of scared to be myself because if I let my inner thoughts out, I felt like people were going to judge me. I was just super. I've been super paranoid for a long time, y'all. Paranoia has kind of taken over my life for an extremely long time. I was just like, I don't know. I was scared of people. I was just scared of being exposed, but I wasn't scared of anybody else exposing me. I felt like the exposure was going to come from inside of me. You know what I mean? So I was just like, it was going to come from me exposing myself by not being able to control myself. So I started acting like everybody else, y'all. The reason you see me, my humor, my comedy, which y'all see, is a it's a defense mechanism. It's a it's a defense mechanism that I've just accustomed. And you know, I think my dad, my, and like a lot of people tell me my, that my dad is kind of uh, he's funny too, but he they, they would consider him goofy. They're like, oh, your dad, your dad is goofy. So you, it makes sense that you got that, you know. So my relationship, I, I love my mom. My mom has always had like this, you know. She's a, she's a mama, a, a black mom in the seven in the eighties and whatnot. She worked to take care of the kids and whatnot. But she worked second shift, so it's like she was at work while we were at school. I mean, we would get out of school, she'd be at work. We we'd be at home with my aunt, you know, what I mean? my aunt Maxine or my cousin Donna. We'd be home with them and whatnot. My dad, my dad was in the picture, y'all. I know y'all people have the stereotypical, oh, the black dad was gold, the the kid. No, we knew who my dad was. We saw we saw my dad all the time, but my dad was like emotionally not there he was emo an emotionally neglectful person i would say that you know he was always emotionally neglectful you wasn't like we would go to we would all, he lived he lived with my grandma for the majority of my life my you know my young my young life to my adult life he would move out to live with a woman every once in a while because he was having so many damn kids um but he was around for most of my life you know what I mean? but he was just what he was just emotionally neglectful we would see him at my grandma's house and he would just be up there with a chick you know what i mean with a woman not a chick y'all sorry but, um he'd be up there with, with, a, with a woman just all, all the time so he was um he was doing that type of stuff right there that's that's the dynamic that he was a part of like so growing up you didn't really have that emotional validation that you get from your from your uh, your dad and your mom worked second shift to take care of the bills and whatnot take care of the house 
So we kind of you kind of raise yourself, which kind of which can lead from what I've known now can lead to arrested development. You know what I mean? It leads to arrested development to get you to the point where you you miss you skip stages of emotional growth because you have to grow up too early. That's one way to go about it. You may. I had to grow up too early. I was the oldest. My mom had two other brothers. One was born in 92. I was born in 95, 94. So I had two younger brothers. So you see, 92, my little brother was born in 94. So that could have something to do with me waking up right there. You see what I'm saying? But you just never know, man. <clears throat> so like I said, back to teenage years. I always felt kind of, I always felt like I was kind of different. Felt like I stood out. Felt like this, felt that. You know what I mean? It was a lot of different moving pieces in that aspect of things. You know what I mean? So what happened was I got older, started, like I said, I was super shy, y'all. I was su I hated rejection growing up. Oh my god, I was super shy. I was scared as hell to talk to girls because I just did not want the shame of rejection. Boy, the shame has been around. Shame as I've grown up, shame has grown up with me. I would say that the older I've gotten, the big the older shame has gotten. The bigger, stronger, faster shame has gotten. As I get older, shame has grown with me. As I, it's kind of like we on the we on congru congru congruent paths. We're both growing to the same rate. You see what I'm saying? The bigger, the bigger I get, the bigger shame gets. So I'm trying, always trying to avoid shame by just kind of being quiet and shy. I was covert narcissist as a as in my youth. I know people are gonna ask me like, when did you, when would you consider yourself a narcissist though? I would say I've been a narcissist for a long time, y'all, for as long as I can remember. You know, eight, nine, ten years old. So it was just those experiences right there, y'all, that I get older. You know, I get older start dating, get into relationships, and all my relationships would end the exact same way, y'all. I would feel like I would fall in love with somebody, like head over heels, like you are my boo, you are the love of my life. You know, I want you, I'm going to validate you, you make me feel so valid about myself that I want you to feel so valid about yourself. So I would throw myself into relationships, y'all. Now. I know that it's love bombing because back in the day, it just felt like, you know, I met, met, met my soulmate, you know, but all my relationships would always end the same way. Y'all, it would literally go from that immaculate feeling of being in love and just throwing head over heels for this person to just damn near nothingness. And that got frustrating for the, I was dating a bunch of people. I was growing up, but like it would get super frustrating. You know, I met my son's mom, my oldest son's mom, and she was, you know, same thing, same type of dynamic. Throw myself into that relationship. We worked together at Blockbuster Video. Throw myself into that relationship. Have a baby. In the same way. I just got emotionally disconnected from a beautiful woman. Just smart, funny, all the other stuff that you all the stuff that you would look for in a partner. Just, you know, you just fall out of love. And it was super frustrating, you know, I'm getting to, I'm, I'm in my twenties now. Then in my thirties, I mean, I'm, I'm mid twenties. So I meet meet the person who I'll marry, uh, who I end up married to now. Met her on Facebook. We had like some mutual friends or whatever, and she added me or whatnot. She'll she'll deny that she added me, but y'all, I can show y'all proof. Um, I messaged her first, but you know, she added me. I don't know who she would, but yeah. So we met, whatever. Again, y'all, the love bombing dynamic. Head over heels in love with this person. Driving, you know, we live like an hour and a half away. I would drive an hour. I would drive an hour and a half just to spend forty five minutes with her and then drive back home. I would do that all the time. Like I used to spend a night with her. And she lived in Raleigh and I worked, I lived and worked in Greensboro. So I would spend the night with her. I would have to be at work at 730. And where she lived in Raleigh was like an hour and 40 minute drive to my job. So I had to get up at like five o'clock in the morning to drive to work or 530. I, the latest I could leave like 540 to get at work, get to work on time. It was wild. And I was doing that type of stuff. Head over heels in love. We go and move, met the parent, met her dad really, really quick. Her mom had passed away a long time ago. Met her dad really, really quick, y'all got to the situation where I was just like, we got married. And I remember getting my proposal. to her. I was just like, this is it for us. Yo, we get married on the day of our, uh, but like, again, y'all, very early on in this relationship, I, I skipped this point, very, er, very early on during the love bombing phase, she told me something that changed my mind about her, that changed my perception of her. I was like, it's, it's literally, the, it's kind of like the love switch went off in that moment right there. And I was just so frustrated that she did that. And I was just like, damn it, I thought you were perfect. I was mad as hell, y'all, when she told me this, this information. I was super mad. But in, I'm tw at this time, I'm like 25, 26. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to try to make this work. Because I'm, I, I kinda, I'm kind of getting a level of self-awareness about myself. But I know my relationships are ending the same way. I don't want this one to end the same way. So let me work harder. Not because of her. It's more because of me. I was just frustrated at that, time, at that point in time. You know, so this is, two th I'm 25. I think I'm about 26. I can't remember exact date, y'all. It's been a while now. But we get to, we end up together or whatever, you know, I'm just super frustrated at her. So I'm trying to force myself to fall back in love with her. And it, it kind of worked here and there. But then we end up getting married and, you know, having a baby. 
And things were going downhill from that point right there, y'all. I was just like, you know, after that point right there, it just, after we had our son, you know, life wasn't going the way it wanted to go. I was super frustrated because in high school, I was a good athlete. I was supposed to go to college to play sports, but I was super scared to go to college. I, I was super afraid of getting rejected by putting putting letters out there to go play college football or basketball. I got scared to play basketball and football. Y'all didn't do any of that. So I'm just, you know, that's weighing down on me yeah, in my mid-20s. This is like, man, you, you could have made it. You could have been something with this. I'm failing everywhere, y'all. Um, I'm working in the warehouse now. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about being in the NFL. I'm working in the warehouse. So I'm super frustrated taking it out on everybody around me. My wife getting the brunt of it. My older son, you know, man, I'm not the best parent in the world to him. It's just super frustrated. And then one day, my wife went to the gym, right? And she went to the gym and she went to work. And I was home with my five, six month old son. And she, you know, I was trying to do some work. I had, I think I had became a real estate agent by this time. Um, I was getting ready to become an agent and he just would not stop crying. And I was just like yelling and screaming at him because I was super frustrated because I was nowhere where I wanted to be in life. Some, somehow me not going to the NFL, or going to college to play football or whatever was his fault. You know what I mean? In that moment. And it just so happened my wife, I guess he had a spider sense. She, so she came home from the gym a little earlier and she heard me yelling at him. She yelled at me. I told her to get the F out. You know, man, like get the hell out of here then. So she ends up leaving. You know, calls me a narcissist on the way out the door. So hard to live with a damn narcissist. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, you a goddamn narcissist. What the hell is it? I thought narcissists were just conceited, cocky people. So she calls me a narcissist. You know what I mean? Gets, you know, she leaves. I'm angry as hell. So I start, I look up the word narcissist, y'all. I climb it. I look it up. I'm just like, the fact, like, I look, I looked it up. I was like, why the hell did she call me that? She could have called me so much, so many other things, but she chose the word narcissist for some reason. So I look it up. And narcissist person, like type it into Google, narcissistic personality disorder pops up. I go down that rabbit hole. I'm like, damn, the, the, the difference that I've been feeling to myself for so long, these, these answers, they, they gave me the answer to why I felt so different, to why I felt so just out of place my entire life. I kept falling in and out of love with people and trying to move on. And I told my wife, I was like, yeah, I'm a narcissist. Damn, you were right. You know, come home. Let's work. I'm, there's no cure for it, but I can go to therapy. You know, I remember joining some self-aware narcissist Facebook groups and getting on there and talking to people. I got on the self-aware narcissist Facebook groups, got on there, talked to them, all the other good stuff. And they guided me to find a therapist in October 2017. I got on psychology typed it in, you know. Typed it, I typed in specialty. Like you gotta look, so you gotta search by specialty. I, spe I searched by a specialized, a specialist in narcissistic personality disorder. You know what I mean? I searched the specialist out and I found one. And, you know, she responded to me well. And I was like, hey, look, the very first email that I sent said, I'm 99.5% certain I have narcissistic personality disorder. And since becoming aware of it, it's exhausting trying to live, like trying to live a normal life. It's, ex it's super exhausting. So we got to that point, you know, she's like, come on in here. I registered, got with it, went in there. Started my first therapy appointment, man. I mean, my first therapy appointment, I was in there crying, y'all. She's like, what are you doing here at 32 years old? I was just like, my life, I'm ruining my damn life. I'm out of control of my life. I'm ruining my life and I'm about to, I'm self-destructing consistently. And she's like, let's work. You know, I do psychotherapy. So many people ask me what type of therapy I do. I do psychotherapy, y'all. I go in there and talk. You have to be artic You have to be able for psychotherapy. The reason psychotherapy works for me is because I am very good at at articulating my thoughts. I might I might not have the biggest the biggest vocabulary, the greatest stretch of vocabulary, which I'm still working on, but I can articulate my thoughts very well. You know, and that's that's why I do that's why I can do what I do right now so good. I can t I can articulate how I'm feeling and tell you exactly how I'm feeling. You know, and it helps me in therapy just being able to articulate my thoughts very well, to articulate how I'm feeling, to, so we can help it out, so we can work to certain conclusions and get there. You know, but my first few therapy appointments, all we did was work on control, y'all. You're trying to control too much. You're going to lose control. You're losing control over your life because you're trying to control too much other things, too many other things. You've been trying to control so much since you were little that it's, it's, it's bled over. It's, it's spilled over into your adulthood. And you're trying to control way too much. You have to release control over things. The very first exercise, one of the very first exercises we did, where I call it the control circle exercise, where she just did, you know, it's literally two circles y'all she did she she drew two circles and i could do it really quick right here because y'all watching this um she drew two circles uh 
Hold on. Did it bye bye? Did it? She do two circles. She do a small circle inside of a bigger circle, right? And the smaller circle inside the smaller circle, she said, write down inside the smaller circle, write down everything that you have control over. You know, write down everything that you have control over in your life. And in the bigger circle, write down the things you don't you don't have control over. But you so for me, you know what happened? The smaller circle was full and the little circle was I mean the smaller circle was full. The big the outer circle didn't have hardly have anything in it because I thought I, I thought I was I was I thought I was in control of way more than I realized I was. And she said, That's the problem right there. You have to work on the you have to get to the point where you feel like you can relinquish control over some things in your life. And this is what it looks like right here, y'all. The smaller circle, you write what you can control, and in the bigger circle, you write what you cannot control. And the reason for that is because you are in control. You're not very you're not in control of much in your life. The things that are outside of your control are bigger. There's more. There's more of it. You know what I mean? So I had to work on getting letting go of control of things, y'all. And it's hurt, it hurts. It's tough when you try to let go of control of things. I had things I had look I had things written inside that little circle that were saying it was things like um um like my brother's job choice. My younger brother, like he gonna work here, not here. I was trying to control where he worked at. Like, and when he would say no and do something I didn't want him to do, I'd become frustrated and they would ruin my day. Trying to control what he was doing with his life ruined my day when he, when he wouldn't listen to me. Trying to control too much. That's what a lot of narcissistic people do. You try to control too much. You're not in control of what you think you control of, y'all. You just are not. You don't control as much as you think you do. We think we're in control. We won't control over so much, but you, but you cannot control. That's why you, you even see some self-aware, a lot of other self-aware narcissists out here that are popping up. They're trying to control way too much. I watch them. I watch them, y'all. They don't, a lot of self-aware narcissists don't like me. I'm, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm so beyond, my evolution is so so beyond so many of them that I don't care. I, I, I won't unfriend them. They don't like me. I share their stuff. They don't share mine. They were like, oh, I'm not going to share Lee Hammock stuff. We don't want to help him grow. Like, I need, I, I'm 20, 30 times, my platform is 20, 30, 40 times bigger than somebody else. Like, why do I need, I don't need to work with y'all, you know? But you see, they try to control this, they try to control the narrative. I'm like, y'all, you can't only control what you want to control. Yo, you, can't, you, can't, you, you can only control what's in your capabilities. The you, only thing you can control is yourself. They want to control what I talk about, how I talk about it. Da, da, da. I was like, y'all, look. I see it. I watch it. And look, most of them are younger. So I'm just watching them being young and just, okay, we, we got the best information. We should be bigger than Lee. Okay, cool. Do it. You won't get my help no more. They didn't, they didn't start saying some crazy shit about me. So I'm just like, okay, but that's how it goes though. Y'all, I don't have no hatred in my blood. In my, I have no hate in my blood for no other self or narcissists, even the ones that don't like me. I don't, cause I don't care about them like that. Y'all, they don't, they don't make my day. They don't make my, my day go. Because I I was in their position one day, one time, at one point in time. Like I knew that I was trying to control too much. Like I see them right now. If I tell them that, they won't listen. But it's all good. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way. <laughs> you know, that's what you want to avoid. You want to. The point is, some a lot of people want to help others avoid what they go through. Sometimes you can't, y'all. Sometimes you, they got to take them lumps. You know what I mean? But y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed. Like I said, I've been I got diagnosed. In early 2018, I cannot remember the date, y'all. Um, early 2018, I started this platform in May of 2020. My TikTok, which is my biggest account. Um, I started it in May of 2020 just to help, you know, just to spread awareness and things like that because I got tired of internalizing my thoughts. I wanted to get my thought process out there for the world to see and for the world to understand. So that's what I'm doing right now, y'all. This is Self-Aware Sunday. I'm just going to be talking about other self-aware self -aware things, y'all. I know I've rambled on. I had, like I said, I had to establish this. I had to establish a lot of the stuff, my baseline, my background story before I go into what I do in therapy. Like I said, the first thing we did in therapy was the control exercise. But next episodes, we're going to be talking about meditating, free thinking, what uh, what more therapies that what therapy has become for me like that right now. Um, accountability is progressive. You know, self-awareness is just the beginning prove what you, you know it's so many different things what my struggles are with being self-aware now so many different things y'all but if y'all like this series you have to interact with this series y'all i'm still i'm gonna do them anyway but like interact with them throw a thumbs up you know drop it like a little bell in the comment section like a little bell if you made it this far drop it like a little bell in the comment section i, I was like hey y'all made it this far <laughs>
Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.